And let's face it, if you are flying this Thanksgiving, you are going to need an enormous amount of patience. Crowds and frustrations are a near certainty at DIA amid the construction, the labor shortages, and COVID era travel. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is breaking it all down in this 360 report to help you prepare for the madness of the holiday season. It's been a bumpy ride out at DIA recently, from long lines at security to construction delays in the main terminal. This was absolutely very turbulent. From massive waves of flight cancellations this fall. Our performance over the last few months, yet yeah, it hasn't been up to what we want. To verbal and even physical assaults on airline employees. So many of our flight attendants have a palpable fear about coming to work right now because they don't know what's going to happen to them physically or verbally. It's all contributing to a lot of anxiety as we head into the busy holiday travel season. I think it's just going to be a learning curve. So we're going 360, breaking down what you can expect if you're heading home for the holidays or flying for the first time in a long time. We switched off the entire travel industry overnight. And then travel came back the second we had a vaccine. Let's start there. AAA's Skylar McKinley says because of surging demand, plus airport and airline labor shortages, you can almost bet on delays. There could be cancellations. There could be delays. There might be long security lines. So our advice, if you want to avoid this as much as you can, is to be flexible. That means getting to the airport early, building in an extra day or two of travel if you can, and being patient with airline employees and other travelers. Leisure travelers who are probably not as quick and easy going through security. Switching to the airline side of things, Southwest says it's scaling back the number of flights through the end of the year so it doesn't have another massive meltdown like it did with thousands of cancellations in early October. Hoping to better balance the activity with the number of employees we've got. They'll be hiring an additional 8,000 people next year, but for now, they're hoping fewer flights result in fewer delays. As for DIA's largest carrier, United. Clearly opening this lobby in time for the holidays was a huge milestone for us. One. They have a new ticketing lobby, as does Southwest, which should theoretically spread out travelers, allowing you to tag and drop your own bags and get to security faster. Segmenting our customers, adding new uh, fancy features. For those airline employees, all of this uncertainty combined with mask and other mandates hasn't been easy on the ones left standing. Look, we, as flight attendants, we get it. It's uncomfortable. We have to wear it and work up there as well. It's not something we love either. Another one of the issues with which we've been dealing, not even counting the physical assaults, is the issue of intoxication on board the aircraft. We have seen uh, many concessions throughout airports across the country start to sell to-go alcohol. And to a passenger, that translates to being able to bring it onto the aircraft. We've seen a major increase in intoxication reports, which which obviously lead to ver verbal and physical assaults. McKinley says, give them a break. Don't take those frustrations out on the gate agent. There are some travel hacks that could make flying a whole lot smoother, like signing up for TSA PreCheck, which you could get approved before Christmas. It's made my life significantly easier, saves time, no taking your shoes off, no taking laptops out, no dealing with toiletries. And just get here early. You should plan that there will be long lines. I got here way earlier than I usually get here. <laughs> Russell Heath. Worst case, you're at the airport early. Denver 7. Now, unfortunately for DIA, there is no one reason they're having such a hard time hiring right now. So let's go in depth. The root cause is a pandemic that made everyone reorder their priorities. DIA could try throwing money at the problem, but then again, others are doing that too. And they could pitch it as a great place to work. But when you have a union strike at your gates, that can be a hard sell. Oh, and as DU professor Jack Buffington notes, there's also the fact that working at DIA means a twice daily drive to and from the middle of nowhere. If you can get a job working at Chick-fil-A, um, you know, right down the street, why would you drive all the way to DIA and go through security? So this gets into being more creative in how they do these jobs. And experts say this labor shortage is going to take at least another year to sort out. And until then, we make do with the long waits and strained service and with fewer flight options. If you haven't already booked your travel for Thanksgiving, good luck. Uh, seats are gonna be limited and prices are gonna be high. If you're flexible and you can travel maybe before or after, uh, you're gonna find prices being much, much lower. 
than they will be during that traditional holiday period of Thanksgiving. The DU professor you just heard from says Christmas does come with one big advantage over Thanksgiving. It's a longer period of time that people travel and therefore more flexibility theoretically in booking.